This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warframe video. So last week I was scanning the Warframe market to see if there are changes on the prices of items in the game. Initially I was planning on just scanning the prices of arcanes that were made available in the Operations Gargoyle Cry event. It seems like arcane prices are slowly getting back up, especially those legendary ones like Arcane Energize. The normal prices I've seen for a max rank Arcane Energize was 2500 platinum or below and right now I'm seeing these prices again and the average price for a max rank Arcane Energize in the market right now is 2000 platinum. There might be a possibility that it will go lower after the Dante Unbound update as Digital Extremes will be adding the Omnia Fisher mission. This is just a guess, but there is a chance that Arcane Energize will get to 1500 Platinum and average as players who loves Endless Run will get to enjoy the Omnia Void Cascade Fisher in the upcoming update, hence more players will be getting more Arcanes from the Zeraman mission, which they can use in the Arcane Dissolution system to somehow get more Arcane Energize pieces. Despite all the methods that are added in the game to get rid of the energy problem, still Arcane Energize is one of the most sought out item in the game since it's one of the most efficient way to regain energy without spending so much things in your setup. In fact, if you have Arcane Energize, sometimes you can make more room to maximize the potential of your Warframe builds. Arcane Energize is truly one of the most rare and definitely an item worth investing your Platinum, but we are not going to talk purely about this Arcane in this video. There are some other rare items right now that are fun and worth investing, and we will tackle more of them in this video. But first, let me show you some crazy prices that players are selling their stuff in Warframe.market. Now, these prices may not be as crazy as the past prices when Prime Chamber was super rare. If you are new to the game, then you have not seen the Prime Chamber era wherein Platinum prices for a single mod is way beyond my comprehension. People are selling the mod for 25,000 platinum and averages. Historically, this mod was originally distributed to the top 100 ranked players in the informant event based on the number of informer kills. Only a few players own this mod, and although there are other events that has distributed this prime mod, still the supply was scarce and it becomes super rare to the point that it reached an insane price tag. Right now, there are still trolls selling the mod in Warframe.market for even hundreds of thousands of platinum, but the average price of prime chamber has been lowered significantly, and it's just sitting for about 400 platinum in average, which I think is okay given that the mod is still rare but not ultra rare as before. At this modern era of Warframe, this mod can be purchased unranked from the Void Trader for 2,995 Ducats and 1 million credits. Because of the nature of the Void Trader that brings different items every time he's available in a specific relay, Prime Chamber is still priced 100 platinum higher compared to other meta mods in the game just because of its rarity. Is it good though? If you enjoy the Vectus Prime, then yes it's good. This mod goes particularly well with the vanilla and Prime version of the Vectus Sniper as it has a one-shot magazine, giving the bonus to all shots fired. In the past, this could be a good alternative for Eidolon hunting setup, but after the Void Rig Mania, sniper weapons were not that meta anymore in hunting Eidolon and farming Arcanes. What's far more worst is that a significant amount of the player base is not playing Eidolon hunt anymore after the Whispers in the Walls update that added the Arcane Dissolution system. In my honest opinion, the Prime Chamber mod is more of a collector item right now, and it's not worth getting with Platinum. It's better that you just get it from the Void Trader once he has the item in his shop. Now, there are two other items in the game that I can consider as collector's item in the past. These are the the Brayton Vandal and the Lado Vandal. This weapon was available to anyone who logged in during the closed beta upon the game transitioning into open beta in the year 2013. It originally had no rank restriction, so anyone who logged in during the closed beta could acquire it, regardless of time spent playing the game. After the game entered open beta, both Vandal versions of the weapons are obtainable in which it was added as a reward in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, a game mode introduced in the Korra update. Although it sounds simple, but the grind for these weapons is by far one of the worst in Warframe. Brayton Vandal Receiver and Barrel has a 4% chance to be rewarded to players, while the rest of the Vandal parts can be obtained after finishing a specific round of conduits in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught for a mere 2% chance, and mind you, and this 2% chance is ultra rare since the reward pool of the game mode is also diluted with other rewards. Normally you will see Spore Saren doing these missions when Elite Sanctuary Onslaught was new, and players who are leveling their weapons got the most benefit, since they can just be carried by Saren to level up their weapons and leave after round 2. For a Saren that is hunting for the Vandal parts though, the most optimal conduit dive is around 4 or 8 rounds before leaving, and the worst thing that could happen is you'll end up doing this for a hundred times just farming those Vandal parts. Now, compared to the Brayton Vandal, I think Lado Vandal is the most sought out since one, Brayton has a Prime version while the Lado Prime is only available for those founders in the game who happens to also own Excalibur Prime. These two Vandal weapons now have incarnate forms which makes them more appealing to Warframe players and when I said that they are collector items in the past, I mean it because right now they are actually fun to use in real mission, especially the Incarn and Lado Vandal. Incarn and Brayton Vandal can be paired with its Prime version and it is a massive boost compared to the Vanilla variant. However,
However, I find the Incarnate Lado Vandal more appealing since the Red Crit build for this weapon is super satisfying and steel path levels. It may not the power of meta kill speed weapon in Warframe, but I enjoy the raw Red Crit damage that a Death Trap Trigger Incarnate Lado Vandal has to offer. This evolution paired with Galvanized Crosshair in your build allows you to deal insane Red Crit numbers to enemies that are close to each other. I love to pair this with my Gloom Hildren for easier headshots, and while the Death Trap Tigger is annoying for some players, as it requires you to swap from your primary to secondary, and worst is, the critical chance and critical damage buff only last for 4 seconds still de I love using the Lado Vandal with its Incarnate form as Gloom Hildren can make it a good synergy. While it's not a meta weapon, the Incarnate form added value to the Vandal weapons that can be farmed in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, and I think they are just priced right for their Incarnate form and how hard it is to obtain just one part of the guns. If there's one gun though that received a huge glow up because of the Incarnate system, I think it's the infested gun named the Torrid. The Incarnate form did not only increase the base stats and the overall damage capability of the gun, but it turned the infested weapon into an amazing rune cleaning weapon. From an infested weapon that throws gaseous projectile, it can evolve now into an infested weapon that melts the enemies in seconds, but the Incarnate form and the weapon itself are not the most expensive items that we must talk about here in this video. The Incarnate form of the Torrid can be farmed in the Steel Path Duviri circuit in a weekly rotation basis. Most probably you will just need to wait for that specific rotation to gain its Incarnate Genesis, and for the base weapon, the Torrid can be obtained by purchasing its blueprint from your dojo's biolab and you can then craft it in your foundry once you have all the resource requirements. The Incarnate Torrid is already great with a normal modding setup, but when you put a Riven mod, the damage can have insane red crit without the help of outside sources such as Arcanes and Warframe abilities. Right now, what I consider to be a perfect Riven mod for the Torrid sells for about 16,000 platinum in the Warframe market. I don't know if this is the right price, but someone is selling it for this amount. In most cases, the average price of a Torrid right now is sitting from 800 to as much as 5,000 platinum, depending on what stat it have. If it has one of the desired stat, most probably a critical chance value, then it would be around 800 to 1,000 platinum, or even more, but an almost perfect one will cost a ton of platinum. I think what I have shown earlier is close to a perfect Torrid Riven, as it gets the best positive stat and has a negative stat that doesn't affect the overall damage performance of the gun. But again, Riven mods are not a necessity in the game, and Incarnate Torrid works fine without any Riven mod that costs 1,000 platinum. However, we can't deny the fact that there are individuals in the game that has lots of platinum and willing to buy these type of Riven mods just to further boost the red crit damage of the Incarnate Torrid. So far, I can say that the Riven mod for the Torrid is one of those that costs a lot, but totally worth the investment if you have the platinum. Now, Incarnate weapons are not the only things that add value to weapons. Before Incarnate forms, they are things called weapon augments, and the next item we will talk is the most expensive augment mod in Warframe that is all also considered as one of the best augment mods in Warframe. I am talking about the Sentient Surge augment for the AOQ Core. The vanilla version of the AOQ Core is sad, but when the augment came out, it became one of the best secondary weapon in the game. Sentient Surge augment is being sold for 200 platinum or above in the Warframe market right now, and this is because it's a very rare augment. Sentient Surge can be obtained by reaching rank 9 with Nightwave during Nora's Mix Volume 4. This augment mod allows the AOQ to refill its magazine each time you kill an enemy. In addition, status chance and critical chance are increased by 240% per 10 active, and you can maintain this buff when constantly killing enemies. Since the augment is rare and important for the Oki Core, it would be a waste selling it right now, but there are players in Warframe.market that are selling this for 200 platinum or above. Also, it has the lowest price in this list, but I still included it here since it's the most expensive mod that you can buy from other players right now. There are two setups that I enjoy playing with my Sentient Surge Oki Core right now. The first one is an Energized Munition Gauss Prime build that allows me to further boost the fire rate of the Oki Core, while maintaining its ammo economy by further adding the Energized Munition Helmet the Ability. Uh, this is great in steel path levels, but if there's one that I enjoy and find useful, that is the synergy of Sentient Surge Core with Necros. I can farm and make good use of Necros Discrete Ability using Sentient Surge Core with Nautilus while having the Amalgam Ripka's True Steel mod. The main idea is that the Nautilus Cordon mod precept will group enemies constantly as I spread status and kill them with my Sentient Surge Core. Then the corpses get desecrated and create more loot because of Amalgam Ripka's that procs Gore, which happens to be a source of dismemberment that activates the loot mechanic of Desecrate. I think it would be unwise to just sell this augment right now and it's super fun to use even in steel path levels. However, I think players who are selling this augment has a valid reason because while it can kill enemies in steel path levels, it's not as good as other meta weapon in terms of killing steel path acolytes. In addition, it needs specific setups sometimes to be fun and useful and I think some players prefer just using those weapons that may be boring but are great in terms of farming. And lastly, I want to talk about Glaive Prime. This is still one of the most expensive if not the most expensive Prime set in Warframe. This is because it's being held hostage by Ember Prime Access and let me ask 
ask you, when was the time we saw Ember Prime access in the Prime Resurgence? Ember Prime may be a good Warframe, but players are craving for its Prime access since it includes one of the most broken melee weapon in the game. We should have seen Ember Prime access along with Frost Prime in the Resurgence event, but as you all know, Frost was included in the Heirloom skin. I think Digital Extremes are looking for a good pair for Ember Prime access in the Resurgence event and until that time comes, the only way to get Glaive Prime is by purchasing the relics for cheaper price or the Prime set for 390 to 400 Platinum. The best part about Glaive Prime is that it's not just a collector's item that is ultra rare since it's unvaulted but it's one of the best weapon in the game and that is why players are sometimes willing to pay 400 Platinum just to get it. Glaive Prime is a good nuker melee weapon that pairs well with almost every Warframe in the game. You can pair it with Colorvo for red crit or with Chroma for damage buff. You can also make a synergy with it from Breach, Surge, Wisp, Plus Motes, and in fact, without any buffs, the Glaive is still great because of its throw mechanic that deals massive slash nuke to enemies hit by the projectile. Also, the Glaive Riven mod does cost a lot of platinum, but if I were to compare it with Incarn and Torrid, I think the Infested Gun has an advantage since it got higher Riven disposition compared to the melee weapon. Glaive Prime is being used by a lot of players that Digital Extremes lowered its Riven disposition, and there is a possibility also that Incarn and Torrid Riven mods will be the same within a couple of months or years, depending on how popular the Infested Gun gets in the span of time. So these are the most expensive things I have seen so far in the Warframe market. Some of them are worth its price, but some are hilariously overpriced that you can't take it seriously. In Warframe, items that are powerful are not always considered as the highest value. There are rare items in the game that is trash, but still priced higher compared to powerful equipments, as they are harder to get compared to meta items in the game. Now, I would also like to know what is the craziest platinum prices you've seen being sold by players in the market? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Squad leader signing off. This is the future.